Hello, this is video number 14, reporting and investigation. Right, when you read in the textbook about a psychological study, you know, for example, Peterson and Peterson 1959 or uh, Jehoda 1958, what that is referring to is a psychological investigation and its associated write-up which is usually an article in a psychology journal. And they're all um, listed here um, in, in the back of the textbook. And you could go to a psychology library and you could look up, you know, the Journal of Evolutionary Psychology, Volume 6, and you could find um, the, uh, the, the report in a psychology library. And what we're doing today is learning about the different sections in a conventional psychological report. Okay, so a few years ago, some students of ours uh, did a piece of practical work on, um, on the evolutionary theory of mate selection, about sexual selection in human beings and its evolutionary origins. So we're going to be uh, looking at this one as we go through the video. Right, the first thing um, in the report is the title, and they actually haven't done that. Um, but the next thing is the abstract. That's the first real section in the report, and I'm, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. The first section that I actually want to look at um, is the introduction. So the first section in uh, the first substantial section in a psychological report is the introduction, and the introduction is a review of the background studies which have already been done in a particular area. It is a short essay which goes over some of the existing studies which have already been done by psychologists who've, in, who've investigated this particular area. And in this girl's report, they're investigating um, the, um, the evolutionary origin of uh, sexual selection, and they've reviewed some work by Walster et al., 1966, and Bus 1989 and uh, one or two others. And after having gone through the background research that other psychologists have already done, what you can then do is move towards the aims of the investigation, which are a statement of what you're hoping to investigate in this current investigation. What is it that you want to find out? Do you want to test? one of the theories that's already in the, uh, the background that you've discussed in the introduction? Do you want to build upon the conclusions that have already been in, drawn by other psychologists and investigate something new? Or do you want to try and disprove something? And so the introduction, like I said, it's a review of the background research that's already been done and then it ends in a statement of the aims of the current investigation. And in this study, uh, we can see that the girls are looking to replicate an earlier study by bus. That's something that they've already mentioned in their introduction. OK, having finished the introduction then and done the uh, aims, we can move on to the hypotheses. And usually, in any scientific investigation, hypotheses come in pairs. An experimental or alternative hypothesis and a null hypothesis. The experimental or alternative hypothesis is a prediction, a testable prediction, which makes a prediction about the variables under investigation. For example, it might say that there is a relationship between two variables or there will be a difference between two different things. It's predicting, in a sense, what you expect to happen if the experiment discovers a true psychological phenomenon. The null hypothesis, on the other hand, is the opposite of that, and it's the prediction of what happens if the results are just due to chance. So the null hypothesis is a statement that the results are exactly what you'd expect if there was no uh, relationship between the variables, or if there was no correlation between the, the variables, or there was no difference between uh, the things that you were testing, or whatever. And in this investigation, 
these girls are making a prediction, um, which I think they're going to find is true, which is that when they're looking for a partner, males rate physical attractiveness as something that they really want to see in a female partner, whereas females, when they're looking for a male partner, they're less interested in physical attractiveness than males. And in this investigation, uh, we can see that they've limited uh, their sample to males of an African or Asian background. Although the likelihood is, I think, that males from any ethnic background are going to favour physical attractiveness more than females. Right, the next section in the report is the method, or sometimes called the procedure. And there's a number of specific things that you've got to mention in this section. So first of all, we're going to mention uh, the experimental design. Is it independent groups, or is it repeated measures, and so on. Or if it's not, even an experiment, is it a correlation, or is it a case study, or a thematic analysis, or whatever it may be. We've then got to talk about the people in the investigation. Who is the population which we're aiming to investigate and who are the sample of people that we draw from the population and what method of sampling are we going to use? Then you need to know, is there any apparatus, any special apparatus uh, that is going to be used in this investigation? And in the girls' investigation, th th there's a questionnaire. And they've actually included the questionnaire as an appendix to the report. Then we want to know the procedure. An actual blow-by-blow -blow account of how they conducted the investigation. And in the report here, they have written a detailed description of how they approached individuals and the individuals were given the standardised instructions and told that they could fill out the report and then they handed it back and, and, and so on. Every tiny little bit of detail um, that describes the procedure of the investigation that was actually done. And finally, in the procedure, we want to see a treatment of the ethics of the experiment. Are there um, any ethical questions or considerations? And if so, what do we do about them? The aim of the method or the procedure um, in a report or an investigation should be that anyone who read it could replicate the experiment Precisely. If you just handed them your report, could they take that away and without any further advice from the author, could they repeat the experiment absolutely exactly with no variation whatsoever? And if the answer to that is yes, then the experiment is uh, replicable, which means of course that it's scientific. So just to remind ourselves, the things that we do need a little bit of detail on in the method section are the experimental design, the sample and the population, any apparatus that we're going to use, a detailed description of the procedure, and a treatment of any ethical considerations. Okay, in a minute we're going to have a look at the results section, but first... It is time for this week's random psychology fact. I can see it. Okay, ready? Research has shown the best way to change a habit is by using fun, surprise, and a crowd. If you want to know more, look into the musical stairs experiment. Well, that was this week's random psychology fact. Okay, results. So the results contains two main things, which are descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So let's take those one by one. The descriptive statistics are very often in the form of a graph of some kind. And uh, it could be a bar chart or a pie chart or whatever is appropriate. It would be a scattergram if it was a correlation. And we can see that 
um, in this investigation, the girls have found that the males score higher than females. The males are the blue bar and the females um, are the red bar. Now, what I would say about this graph, it's a lovely bar chart, but they haven't labelled the y-axis. So I'll tell you what the y-axis is here. Uh, what it is, is a score out of five for how much the males rate physical attractiveness as being important in a partner and a score out of five for how much the females rate physical attractiveness as being important in a partner. And you can see that the mean for the males is nearly 4.5 out of five. They really want to see uh, their girlfriend attractive, don't they? And the females, well, they still want the, their, their boyfriends to be attractive, but they're not as bothered. Um, another thing about this graph is it hasn't got a title. And if you do one, then we can at least remember to do those things. The other thing that we need to see in our results section are inferential statistics. And inferential statistics are a little bit of mathematical calculation where we work out, are we going to reject the null hypothesis and are we going to accept the alternative or experimental hypothesis? And lots, lots more about inferential statistics coming up in other videos. But for now, all we need to know is inferential statistics say, right, let's assume that the null hypothesis is true. Let's assume that there is no difference between the variables or there's no correlation between the variables or so on. In, in this investigation, let's assume that there's no difference between males and females in the extent to which they seek um, physical attractiveness in their partners. Let's assume that males and females are the same on that, on that metric. What then is the probability of the results that we have obtained happening just by chance? Is it likely that we would get these results if the null hypothesis is true? If there's no difference between men and women's preferences, what are the chances of getting these results? And um, we can see from this investigation that for sure men do rate physical attractiveness higher than females, but is it significantly different? Is there a significant difference and is it sufficiently significant to reject the null hypothesis? Well, we can see here that in the girls' uh, calculation, they've done the Mann-Whitney U test. Don't worry about that. We'll be doing that in another video. Uh, and they have done their calculation and they have rejected the null hypothesis. And so what they're saying is that, yeah, the chances of getting those results just by chance, are less than 5%. And so we think that there is a real psychological difference here and that men do uh, prefer attractive females more than attractive, uh, more than females prefer attractive men. The next section is the discussion section and there's a number of specific things that we want to see in the discussion section. Firstly, we want to see a summary of the results with a little bit of explanation of them. We're not repeating the results section, but we're just summarising it and interpreting it. Um, secondly, we want to see what relation our results have got to the background research that we mentioned in the introduction. And this bit of the report should link back to the introduction. Do the results that we've got confirm any of the studies uh, that were mentioned in the introduction or do they refute them? And you can see here that the girls um, have supported uh, Buss's findings. The next section is you do a sort of methodological critique of your own experiment. In other words, if you were going to do the experiment again, how would you improve it? It's almost like AO3 for your own investigation. Were there any flaws in the questionnaire? Were any of the things ambiguous? Did the sampling go wrong? Anything that, um, that could be improved about the investigation. We also want to see a section about any implications for theory. Does the results that we've got, does it confirm psychological theory or does it oppose some established psychological theory? And finally, we want to see suggestions for future research. Where next?
this research that we've got might answer one question, but does it raise another question? And if so, what might be the next thing to investigate? All right, nearly at the end of the report, um, the references section. In the girls' report, they talked about an article by Bus uh, published in 1989. And what we need to do is to leave a signpost in our write-up that tells any reader where they can go to find Bus's original article. And this is in the references section. So, if you're writing a reference for a journal article like, like Bus 1989, here is how you do it. First of all, the name of the author or authors, surname first, followed by initials, then the date, the year of publication, the title of the article, the name of the journal where it's published, and the volume and issue number in which it is published, and then the page numbers where the reader can find it. And that way, if you're in a psychology library, you can just go straight and find the original article by bus. The other thing we need to know is how to reference an entire book. So some, some references are not just like one article in a journal, it's like an entire book. And in this case, we put the author's name or names, first of all, again, surname followed by initials, the date of publication, the title of the book, the place of, the pub of publication, and the name of the publisher. And here are some examples of uh, articles that are in uh, one of the textbooks, and you can see that they do follow this, uh, this convention. And the final section in the report is the appendices. And this is where you put all of the long-winded stuff that you don't want necessarily everyone to plough through, reading every tiny bit of it, but it kind of needs to be included for the sake of completeness. So, for example, the questionnaire, the actual full questionnaire that you're using, if you're using a questionnaire, the raw data, the scores of every individual person who did the test or did the experiment or whatever. You can summarise these things in the main body of the report and we put them in the appendices for the sake of completeness. Not everyone is going to read all of the appendices. Right, now, the abstract is the first thing in the report but it is the last thing you write, because it, what it is, is a very short summary of the entire report. All of the sections that I've mentioned, you distill that down into a hundred or so words, a complete summary of the whole thing, and that is right at the top of the report underneath the title. So it's the thing that is written last, but actually goes first in the report. And if you uh, Google search, uh, for um, articles, psychological articles, uh, journal articles and so on, very often what you'll get is a screen which has got the abstract of the report. And then unfortunately for most psychological articles, the, the main thing is behind a paywall.